when I was 14 and the Intifada started. Hind Husseini told us, you go to the refugee camps. Four uh, Palestinian workers were killed. The schools are closed. Go to the refugee camp and open the schools. That's our mission, to keep the school open. What she didn't realize, what my father didn't realize, that by giving me education, they gave me the seed of in the, in, the, in the education system, there was the seed of rebellions because what they accepted, what they bent, not that they bent their head down, but what they accepted, what they tried to, to survive through, which is a military occupation, my generation didn't want to accept. So we went to the refugee camp. I saw what was happening. And after I finished my classes, after I saw the, the building coming down, my first instinct is to leave my bag and go in the street, scream, and say what the Egyptians are saying today freedom, democracy, dignity, live a different life. The soldiers were so terrible with us, you know. The first time I was in a manifestation, I remember they start shooting immediately, and somebody throw me in a, in a, in a garbage, and I stayed there for half an hour, and I thought I was so terrified. Then you're not scared anymore. You go there the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And, and we decided to go there until they heard the, our voice. When I start writing, I wanted, I wanted European readers, the audience, the American audience, to understand our story and to understand it from a human point of view, how a girl in Haifa lived her life, who's Israeli, she has a boyfriend that's Palestinian, and these things happen every day. And these are the kids, you know, my generation, that think, why should it be two, two state solution? Why should it be one state solution? I mean, when you say one state solution here, people faint almost. But when you say it in Haifa, and I swear to God, when I said it first time, they thought I was out of my mind. This is what you hear in Tel Aviv. This is what you hear in Akko, in Haifa, in Yaffa. This is what you hear everywhere. And you know, when you go to talk to people in Jerusalem, you hear people that are very angry. And, but you go a little bit outside Jerusalem, and the country is a different country. This is what we wanted to show with the movie. And it's a different perspective on things. Miral sounds naive in a way, but she's not at all. She's representing her generation view. When, they, when she say, why can't we have the same country? 2003, you have Avraham Borg, the president of the parliament, who resigned. And in his resignation letter, he writes, now we have to choose. Either we want a democracy, and the democracy has to be for everybody, and that means it will not be a Jewish state. Or we can decide that it will be two-state solution, and it's fine. But that has to be done in a way where there's no, other, no settlements inside, no, no outposts, no militaries. And we have to take everything that's inside the West Bank and East Jerusalem actually inside Israel. And he said, it's hard to make these choices, but these choices will determine if Israel will survive or not. Well, actually, in fact, he, did, he said, we might not have a Jewish state, but we could have a state of Jews. Yes. Which is a different thing. And in a state of Jews, you can actually have Palestinians that have the same rights. Because they don't have to be Jewish. They could have the same democratic rights, but it could be a state of Jews with Palestinians. Now, they insulted him, and they called him, actually, a Jewish Hamas. I, I always thought that this guy was actually honoring Israel more than anybody, or anybody else. He was a great man, and he is a great man. He was not only insulted, harassed. He was marginalized and what do you, you know, think I think I think I think he's great I mean I, I don't know what you think and yes about, his visions are a oh, little bit okay great <laughs> uh, I mean I think he'd be perfect prime minister yeah but saying actually. that you know what I lived really I have no resentment in what I mean is when my mother died and I find myself in an orphanage that you can find in the book my sister was with me and she was four and she was scared she had so much fear and and she was traumatized because from a small house where you have family and love and affection and you are the center, you live in a big place with many other kids and it's a school, it's an orphanage. So she was crying the whole time and she continued telling me, I want to go home. So I started telling her stories and telling her stories actually made her come down and that became my tool to relate to her, to relate to that school and actually to start dreaming of a better world and start reading. What I went through in the first intifada, you know, when you saw, when I was arrested and beaten, and I saw, you know, I was beaten even in the streets. I really, and I swear, and I'm not saying this for you or for 
I have no resentment at all, but what worries me, that what happened to me, it still happened today to many other girls. I was 14, today I'm 37, my daughter is 14. Does our children have to go through this forever, or it has to stop one day?